Hello, and welcome to the Quantizer. Today we're going to talk about how to create this circuit, which is composed of a custom block here that we're going to describe how we made this to create a pulse width modulated signal. And then we're going to pass it through a low pass filter, which will convert that digital signal of the PWM signal into an analog signal. And then uh, it will be at a DC offset, so we'll remove it with this uh, blocking capacitor, which effectively will create a, um, a high pass filter when you connect everything up. And so let's go ahead and show you what it will look like on the output once we're done. So let's simulate, let's grab this clock and this uh, control line and the PWM output. Now this clock and control line, they don't need to be connected. I just connected it so you can see the internals of the circuit that we're going to build. And you'll see that a control signal is made and on the negative clock edge of each one of these um, on the negative clock edge of the clock, it'll sample the control signal and create a pulse width that is proportional to the voltage value uh, between negative five and five volts. And so at you know negative five volts, it will produce no pulse, and at five volts, it'll produce a full clock cycle's worth of pulses. And anything in between is a um, is linearly selected between those two. And so um, and then ultimately, it will go through this low pass filter, which will create this jaggedy sine wave and then through this high pass filter that will take the dc offset off of it and then you can also uh, adjust the amplitude by putting it through a voltage divider so let's go ahead and do that we're going to start by deleting everything here except for um, this we're delete everything except for this value which tells the simulation to run a transit simulation and for how long and how many times to sample and um, we're going to add a block in fact we're going to add a custom block that bring this up over here that we we've made ahead of time the how to create one of these custom blocks is beyond the scope of this video uh, but just so you know this is the pin table and it has five pins of clock control clear out and ground and then we just created that graphic with those pins in those places so let's go ahead and add that to our schematic pwm source and then um, we will add some resistors. Let's add one here. Let's add one here. Um, and then we're gonna need one on the output of here as well. And then let's go ahead and wire these up. Press W to wire, press A to add, uh, ground. C to copy, C to copy. Let's bring this over here. Let's add a capacitor. And then let's wire it all up. W to wire, W to wire, W to wire. Done. Okay, let's get some resistance values. Again, these don't really matter over here. This was just to um, just to show the internals of that block. Let's do this over here as well. This output does matter because it creates the low pass filter. And so we're going to use the value of 3.3 kilo ohms and a hundred nanofarad capacitor. And we are going to connect the clear and the ground to both ground. Let's do that as well. And then we're going to add the spice model to this object. So let's click edit spice model, select the file. We've already written this file and here it is. Uh, if you want to know more about it, go to the www.thequantizer.com. We have a blog written up on this, but I'll quickly go over what it does. So we're creating a sub circuit named PWM source. It has five pins of clock clear in, excuse me, clock control in clear out and ground. Uh, it's going to be it's going to have a X spice object in here that has connected to the nets of clock, clear in, clear out, and the object is pulse two, which is defined by this model, which does the one shot, and it, it is going to create that PWM output based on both the control and the clock. So this creates the clock pulse, and this creates the um, the the sine wave, the control input. Let's go ahead and run the simulation, but before we do that, we need to label these components you can do that automatically by clicking this button and annotating the symbols and then they're all labeled and now if we go to tools simulate it'll bring up this window 
and we can run the simulation and then we can probe the output. So again, let's look at that control line, the clock line and the PWM output at first and you will see this. And then as we pass it through the low pass filter, it will produce that jaggedy sine wave that is oscillating around about 2.5 volts. And you can see it's working by um, every time that the PWM signal is on, it's going to charge the capacitor and when it goes off, it discharges and then charges and discharges, charges, discharges. And so that's what creates this sine wave type signal. And you may think, well, this is a really bad signal right here. It's pretty, pretty, pretty jaggedy. And you can fix that by uh, increasing your sample rate. And so we're going to go ahead and show how to do that. Inside of this one shot, we're going to change our sample rate to be 10 times as much. So instead of five times per cycle, we're going to do 50 times per cycle. And these are all the places where that matters for our model. And so let's go run this circuit again, and we will get to see the outputs. And you will see, this is the output. The, the clock is happening way more times. We get a lot more pulses, but we also get a lot cleaner um, sine wave coming out of here. You can still see that there is, you know, a charge and discharge on it. So you can increase the resolution more to get a better signal. But overall, it's not, not too bad of an output. And so uh, the last thing we're going to want to do to this is to take off this DC offset. And we're going to do that by adding that high pass filter. So we're going to first add what's called a decoupling capacitor. So let's go ahead and add a capacitor here. And we we'll use the value of 0.47 microfarads, I believe. And then we're going to also get another resistor here and another one here. I think we have the value of 10K, excuse me, 5K, 10K overall. 5K here, 5K here. Let's wire this up. And this will give us a capacitor, will block the DC, and then a voltage divider network that will let us. Uh, control the amplitude of the output. So let's go ahead and uh, relabel everything. Let's reset the values. And let's run the simulation again. Okay, let's probe uh, the output of the high pass filter. And you'll see that this is now oscillating around zero volts. And so that's what we want. Um, so if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Um, and if you have anything, any questions, uh, please put them down in the comments and let us know. Thanks and have a great day.